You can start whenever you want. I'm I'm just, waiting, I make sure it's officially 6.30. I'm just like, I, I have to remember to start it because Marty is not here. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to ask, but I'm waiting for the official 6.30. So yeah. let me give Tammy just a second because she's locked it in and then I can pull her all present. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, this is an entrance. The last, the last this one. is an entrance. This is not the walk of shame. We don't do that. All right. Welcome to our planning commission meeting for October 11th, 2023. We have all seven commissioners present. And I've asked uh, Commissioner Hamuli to give us the opening prayer. I guess I'm like Father, our great brother's chance we have to be assembled for this planning commission meeting. We're grateful for our ability to live here in peace and the beauty that we enjoy and all the blessings we enjoy. Pray that my blessings to uh, address those things that have, are on our agenda and that we might be able to enjoy discussion and help in pace and to continue to grow. And grateful for all of the things that thou gives us and knowledge I have and all these things and ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Item three is our consent agenda. Is there any discussion for minutes from our previous meeting of August 23rd? <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. 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 Really? All in favor by yes. 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 Okay. Uh, it's a public forum, but we don't have anybody online, do we? No. So we were just going to skip the public forum unless somebody else has something they want to bring up for that point. And we're going to go to item five. This is a public hearing for the ordinance tech amendment of title 12. And this is more of a formality because the state mandates this. So I don't think we have a lot of choices on approval or denial, but it was very nice to give us this option to pack it though. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was going to make a motion that on title 12, just so we send a positive recommendation. Then. 12 and 13. 12 and 13. 12 and 13. But not addressing no, the. Uh, actually, we're not. We're not changing anything in there. Okay, okay. I, I saw the note here that we weren't doing the title 13 yet. Yeah. 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 I wasn't sure. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. So well. Well. Yeah, no. and, and we do have to open a public hearing. Yep, so we need a motion to open a public hearing. But I have four slides for you. So, but if you read the packet, then you'll know that I plagiarized <laughs> my own work. So I guess that's not plagiarism. <laughs> First of all, uh, let me apologize for being tardy with this. Um, sometimes my time gets away from me. But uh, as most of you know, uh, these ordinance text amendments are related to uh, subdivision review and approval. Uh, and as was mentioned, uh, the major breakdown of this is that uh, the state legislature changed the code. And uh, the gist of that is that uh, the subdivision and review and approval for single family, two family, and townhome projects uh, is no longer at the discretion of the Planning Commission or the City Council. They are not the land use authority for that. Uh, in Payson City, we have designated the Development Services Director and the Public Works Director or their designees as the land use authority for those items, which honestly makes sense uh, on a number of levels because uh, those are administrative approvals anyway. Uh, if they meet the requirements of our ordinance, uh, they should be approved. Uh, there should not be a lot of uh, discretion on that. Uh, we do still have ways that if people want to uh, change uh, or deviate from our ordinance, we have a development agreement that would go to city council. Uh, to allow those types of things, but uh, the long and short of this is that Senate Bill 174 uh, basically mandates this change. And so uh, these uh, ordinance amendments just comply with that and make our ordinance uh, compliant with state code. So our staff recommendation is that you forward a positive recommendation uh, of these proposed amendments to the city council. As was mentioned, um, and and I would say that you, you got my report late last night. Uh, if you have any questions about that, I can go over, I have a copy of it up here. We can go over all of the different sections 
uh, or you could even uh, remand this if you want more time to review. Our intention is to take this to city council on November 1st uh, for their review, uh, but... Uh, I do have, I, I read it. <laughs> but 12.48.000, it still had like staff planning commission or city council instead of land use authority and planning in there, and I didn't know if that was on purpose. There was one that was purposeful. Sure. But it was in red, not in the Just blue. didn't strike through on the red. Oh, it's I wasn't sure. there. <clears throat> Here's that one. Yes. I mean, it's in line. Yeah, you have planning question in red, but it wasn't strike through, so I'm assuming it was supposed to be removed. Also on that same section, 12.48.040, um, the one there's there's review on that first, <coughs> first line. Um, one of them needs to be strict oh, it's, stricken. It's review review. I left that right. in my notes. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Finish your presentation. You can, you can ask, ask me questions at this point. Yeah. So these are this is really good actually. Uh, like that first, like Kip saying. Yeah, it says I lay on the first line and staff shall review, and that's new language. But on the other side, it says review the so. Oh sure yes, yeah, we staff shall. So yeah, I forgot to be, I forgot to strike that part. And that's so. Fine. Um, one way that we could take care of that is in your recommendation right. uh, to make sure that those notes are included as it goes to, yeah. uh, with those, you can forward the positive recommendation with those notes. Now on 12.46.010, I'm in the preliminary plan. Okay, readability there. Um, first two sentences. Um, following the presentation of concept plan to staff. This is worded really weird. Well, in like our I said, I think, I, think, I think it should. I think it should say the applicant and staff will meet and discuss because. Yes. Well. following the presentation of concept plan to staff, the applicant and staff will meet and discuss. That's, that would just be- We can make those changes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, we'll I think- that in a proposal. Okay. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> I didn't walk right into the back any of those. So. Well, then there was also yeah. a space missing for the grammatical log 12.14.090. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like bingo. <laughs> yeah. I had that one. So I had a question. Yeah. The subdivisions of three lots or less, is that even necessary anymore if it's all to the staff for all subdivisions now? Do we even need that section about three lots or less? It's 12.14070. Um, I just kind of had that thought I, can, and I was like, I, probably not. I can ask Jason about that. And and then we can, if we need to revise that before uh, council, if you are if you guys are okay with that, yeah. we can do that. I just, I was reading that, like, well, it doesn't, I mean, it made sense back then because planning commission was different than city right. council and everything else, but now if everything falls to staff, so it doesn't Correct. make sense to point out that particular subdivision. Yeah. I'll I'll run that by the attorney. Okay. Wait, we... the, the different one than the one that's here. <laughs> You're just here to keep it out of trouble. <laughs> I'm sorry. The first one I think that we did did you 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 talked about review the review that the staff is that staff having vision of city council is that correct is that the same land use authority or all right Kathy let me get there. 
right here. Yeah. Third line down. Yeah. Oh, that should be stricken. Yeah. Yeah, it's in red, but I forgot to put the strike through. So all of that should have been striked through. Yeah. yeah. Good catch. I'm saying I'm not dancing. Yeah, I'm good. Good. <clears throat> I'm having a little bit of heart rate about what the legislature did here. Uh, they have taken this out of the hands of the elected authorities and put it into uh, an administrative function. I'm not sure I'm real comfortable with that. I can understand that. Um, let me explain why. Uh, subdivision is a is an administrative process, not a legislative one, uh, and that's why. If you have an administrative process, you should be able to check boxes and determine whether whether the application fulfills the requirements of the regulations of the zone. And if you can do that, then the answer should be yes. If the boxes cannot be checked, then the answer has to be no. So it's putting that onus on them to interpret. Correct. Because we shouldn't or couldn't deny a subdivision if it was in the property zone anyway. They mm -hmm. come in and request. And, uh, and that yeah. all, everything is reactionary, right? And so if you think about why why this uh, bill came to the legislature, it, it's a reaction to other legislative bodies that have maybe taken a little bit more liberty with that administrative action. Than they should have. And so those actions end up at the state legislature because immediately somebody's on the phone, right? And saying, this city council said that I couldn't have that, but I met all of the requirements of the zone. What is this, what is the effect does this have on um, the condominiums that become the really popular thing that don't want to build them? Lots of affordable housing arguments going on and things like this. What impact does this have on the city's ability to negotiate or, or be not approve a particular proposal? That, you know, in the past, we staff and all have gone through quite a process to make sure that this would be as good as it could be for the community. So what impact does this have on that? Great question. So at this point, the the this new uh, law only applies to single family, two family, and townhome, not multifamily. So if somebody is requesting a multifamily project, then our current our current code still remains the same that Planning Commission is a recommending body to the City Council, who's the approving body for that. And, and the legislature left that alone. Whether they will in the future uh, definitely depends on reactionary choices, right? So. You, you get real nervous because developers can come in and develop something and they're involved for a year or two while they get everything built. They disappear and the city moves forward. As we discussed many times for the decades after that. So I'm, I'm a little nervous about taking things out of the hands of the legislature. Yeah. I think that's a well noted comment. Um, and, and I would just say that as the planning commission, one way to safeguard against that is to really review our general plan, review our zoning plan and our zoning designations. Make sure that they're okay. Make sure that what is allowed in those zoning designations meets what we want to within the city and make sure that our code reflects really our desire for development within the city. That's truly where the power of the planning commission and the city council lies in determining what projects get approved and what don't. So I think it's a it's a good opportunity for us to um, really think about what we'll allow in those zones in our city and 
we can, you know, it might be a good time to start picking a section. Uh, you know, we could even start with the RMF zone and say, okay, let's just study it and really understand what that would what would be allowed within the zone or um, and make sure that those re regulations and requirements match the desires of the city. Like the thing to be expecting that we're going to have less building going on Sorry, Claire. No, it's fine. Oh, the, the makeup of the uh, land use uh, authority is that mandated in the ordinance, or do we have some discretion as to who is part of that land use? Authority? We do have a little bit of discretion on that. Um, in talking with the city attorney, given the way that the system works in that it's an administrative approval situation, uh, we felt that having the development services director or designee um, and the public works director or designee that encompasses those two very critical parts of subdivision, um, but we're definitely open to some further consideration. Just a question. You're free to answer, answer honestly here. If you have a choice, first of all, would you have a member of the city council or the mayor? Uh, it prohibits a city council member. What about a, a planning commissioner? Planning commissioner is okay. I I I, I really agree with what Commissioner with, with Blair's saying. Um, obviously, there's nothing we can do retroactively to change this as a state. A state law coming down, but we're, we're taking this out of the purview of the public view and moving it almost all behind closed doors with staff, which we definitely trust you guys and everything. But I, I want to see a way that the, this is still open to the public and viewable with with the way it is now. It comes before us and we can we can wrench on these developers a little bit and ask them questions and talk to them. Moving forward, how will the public see what the plans are the for question. the subdivision? Great question. Um, so at the time of zone change, for existing properties that are already zoned, um, those properties have entitlement. And basically what we've said is we're okay with these properties developing in this specific manner. And so that's why we have those regulations within our zoning code that says if you're developing in the R19 zone, then these are your requirements. And if they come to us with a proposal to develop exactly to those requirements, then the answer has to be yes. If they come to us and say, I actually want to have 7,000 square foot lots, then they can't do that, right? They have to come before the planning commission and the city council to go through the zone change process. And that's where it becomes legislative. Yeah, I think the, the development that we're worried about would have to go through the zone change process. So that yes, yes and no. I mean, there's already some areas that are zoned for, for subdivisions already that they can just plop up, no problem, without coming before us. But yeah, I agree, the big ones we'd have to change. But yeah, I, I, I think. The idea here is double checking what ordinances are appropriate for the private area. I guess when we can do what is really good. So, so yeah, I, I think that's a great point. Commissioner Rowley, to your point, uh, and Commissioner Warner, I would have no problem with a member of the Planning Commission being on that land use authority. I don't see the purpose of it in that if an application meets the requirement of the zone, we can't say no. That's the only that's the only caveat to that. So yeah, I think I think if there was somebody from the planning commission on that, it would be more of a rubber stamp type thing because just like you said, if they meet all the qualifications. 
And even if one of us was appointed to that, when it comes through, all you can do is look at it and say, well, I need everything. So they're already. Yeah, and that's kind of the heart. That's kind of the crux of this issue that, um, like we said before, sometimes uh, approving bodies have overstepped their boundaries. Uh, and that's why this is coming before you. Uh, make no mistake, this definitely opens the door for further review, right? So is uh, is there any ability to to make this more public for people to review the plans of subdivisions, even if they're already zoned appropriately? I don't think it changes anything of our um, noticing requirements or anything like that. Well, it, it would be you. Go ahead, Jill. I can add, because I know that you're working on another project that may help. Is it so they can comment on or just be aware of what's happening in the community? You guess both, but definitely at least aware. Because I know um, one thing that Robert is working on is we're looking at doing um, more like storyboards or story maps um, on our website that we would, anything that we're reading, even administratively, we would have that available on the website for planning commissioners, for council members, for the public, businesses, anyone to be able to go into a mapping system, zoom in, they can click on a parcel of land and there would be information, site plans, pictures, information. They may not, it may be administrator, but that's one thing that Robert is working on um, in order to help provide more information to the public on projects that are going on. A lot of times people don't know the difference between administrative and, and legislative, but that's a tool that, you know, Robert feels that would be very helpful for the public um, so they know what's happening in the community. They can always still call staff with questions, um, but just to educate and provide information, that is something we're working on. See, and then also that, that allows for more transparency so that that way in this day and age where we have a lot of things that are not transparent, it gives the public a chance to know that we are sharing what we work off of. And then even if we did to the point previously about being on the, as a, a part of that group that that's, uh, you know, on, on the group that talks about it, we would hopefully share the same understanding of what um, the staff already feels are the parameters that have already been met, that we wouldn't do anything and say, no, I disagree. That would be perhaps where we would go talk to our legislature, legislator and say, we have a real concern about you guys stepping in and doing this. Um, but listening to that last training that we just went to, right, where you hear different city councils that are getting roasted about what, well, this person told me I could do this, or I met all the requirements and I could do this. Um, I, I at least am comfortable in understanding that they're trying to help us um make recommendations and force us also to review what's already currently in place like we're doing now to make sure we understand and i would just chime in and say that i have a family and a job i don't have to um, so I nominate kathy then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah clearly we know who our uh, honorary person so is. but but jill thank you for bringing that up and robert thank you for working on that that alleviates a lot of my hesitation about as long as there's something in the works that that remains this and that anybody can click on it and find out what it's going what's going on and what the plans are that alleviates a lot of my concerns yeah so i think that getting that up and running and thank you jill for reminding me of one more project that i so <laughs> used to coming um and it's in the works i think that will be a really good opportunity for people to know because there'll be a map uh, that identifies the different projects that are going on in our community. When you click on the link, um, the project plans and description will come up so people will know. Um, I would say to your comment about providing comments, uh, this is just me speaking personally and, and very raw. It gives a false sense of entitlement. It, 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 there's no point in commenting on something that can't be changed. What people can comment on is if they don't like the standard, then we need to work on the standard, right? And we need to be aware of that and say, okay, maybe maybe we need to look at amending our code. And that's where you as planning commissioners specifically come into play and your expertise 
and and reviewing those different things to say we can bump up our code we can change the regulation anytime we want to um and just to make sure that it's uh, we get a better product and better better neighborhoods within our community any other questions all very good ones thank you yeah and i would make a motion then if i would start the open public hearing so yeah do you want to make a motion to open public hearing? motion to open the public hearing i have a motion do i have a second a second Mr. Morgan, all in favor by yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No public online. <laughs> Any comment there? I would just, I would just at this point, just for uh, housekeeping sake, uh, because I'm not taking notes and Marty isn't here. We're working off the recording. Make sure that you identify yourself in your motion and uh, do a roll call. You want roll call? Yeah. All right. You need a motion to close public hearing. A motion, Commissioner Haberly, to suggesting that we uh, close the public hearing. Okay, a motion to a second. Second from Mark Van. Okay, all in favor by yes. 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 That one. That's okay. If it's unanimous, yes. we're good. We'll do a vote call for all the talk about the okay. call votes at the, the meeting and how throws people in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It makes, you, it makes you committed to your. Uh, they were talking about how the person up front leads the other person and changes their opinion because they're like, oh, well, the first three said yes, so now I have to. It's better than what they're doing. Some people want to send because yeah. they get thrown under the bus. That's better than what they're doing at Harvard. So, all right. <laughs> Is there any further discussion besides what we've already had? So, I know you're working off the recording. We had some grammatical things. Um, so, I, I wanted to make a motion that we send a positive recommendation to Title 12 to the City Council with, this, with the uh, grammatical overstrikes and the changes that we've noticed in the sections that were brought up in this meeting. Okay. I have a motion by Commissioner Haley. Anybody else? Second. Second. Commissioner Morgan, all in, no, 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 all in favor. We'll start on the end here. Commissioner yes. Commissioner Haley. Yes. Marzan. Marzan, yes. Commissioner Frisbee, yes. Commissioner Warner, yes. Morgan, yes. Really, yes. Okay. okay. We'll move on to City Council. And then next item is a work session about the shipping containers. Most of the other staff reports, and that's technically number six. Let's get those to the end of catch up to them. All right. Well, this is intended to be a, uh, a discussion. Um, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but we have shipping containers that are popping up all over in the city. Um, part of our logic with this um, discussion is to get input from you on whether or not you would think there's any value in having regulations beyond what we do to regulate uh, shipping containers. Um, so let me show you the code we have right now. I know that's a lot of text right there, but it doesn't say much as far as regulation. It typically, for the most part, says that, that these shipping containers can be used on a temporary basis. Um, they can be used in non-residential areas, um, and they can be used uh, for temporary businesses, such as like the fireworks biz businesses, um, donation center drop-off locations, things like that. It's pretty limited. Um, so questions before we get any further. So Michael, there's 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 nothing on the books as far as a business using it as permanent storage. Correct. Okay. Or a resident using it as permanent storage. Correct. Okay. How long ago was this written up? I am not sure when this was. We all just done. looked straight towards Jill. Um, <laughs> I. What is this? Ten years. Oh, okay. I thought it's you been said been today. Been I'm like, oh, that's. <laughs> it's been a while. Okay. So yes, it, <laughs> enforcement could definitely be improved upon for sure. Um, but with that said, if you don't have other questions, I'll continue. 
Um, some concerns and uses ah. for them. Uh, Tyson Adams House. <laughs> that is not Tyson Adams House. That's not. No. <laughs> that, that, I call that the, I call that the Temple of Price because we don't have a temple in Price where I live, and somebody decided to put that hideous monstrosity there, and and it's right on the corner, and the city isn't bothering to even enforce getting rid of it. But um, I think from the aerial view, you can probably recognize that other one. Um, Raylock. Yep, that's Raylock. Um, so common uses for these things, I think we all are aware of. Hold on, Michael. If you don't know where Raylock is, uh, that's like third east, right? Fourth east, something down like that. Down by the needle position, but seventh section. north. Oh, darn yeah. It. yeah, yeah, right by the bus depot. I had a link that would actually go to it. Paris or not? Hopefully, up there. Yeah, Paris RV is just to the north. But to compare to some of the sheds I see at yards in this town, the storage containers actually are fairly attractive. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen, we've seen a lot of these things for merchandise too, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And that would be acceptable under the code as it talks about for temporary purposes uh, for in a commercial uh, zone for a commercial business. Um, so this is not a, a extensive list. I just kind of put this together. If there's other uses or concerns you can see, then by all means, we can talk about them. Uh, but these tend to be the things that I think most of the time people associate with these containers, both concerns and uses. Any further comments on this? Just, uh, I've noticed uh, watching TV and different things, it seems like in some parts of the country, they, some people have advocated using these for permanent dwellings. Well, that is a perfect segue to my next slide. <laughs> Let's go to your next slide. Oh, sorry. The slide after this slide. Um, I don't know if you've been to East Bay and Polo, but to the east of the post office, they have, I don't have anything, no kind of as a fence. I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't. It's a, it's a great fence, but it's not cute. <laughs> so one more use then would be a fence. You haven't really thought of that. It is. But okay. It is. <laughs> and, and Provo has had this same conversation. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Something like this is perfectly acceptable in our code right now because it's temporary, right? Uh, people can get these pods, they can load them up, they can haul them somewhere, whatever they do with them. Businesses can use them, that sort of a thing. Um, going to uh, Commissioner Warner's comment, um, people are obviously use them for sheds. And you can see, I had to put the Temple of Price on there again because I, I felt as if that was such a good example of what not to do. Um, but you can see some of these are the, are the most drastic um, examples of what these are going to look like when somebody is storing them somewhere on their property, right? They're going to be these hideous um, things that are rusting and ugly and just look out of place. Uh, can anybody tell what that picture is in the top corner that has the Klein one? It's like a storage facility for containers. Nope, that's Raylock. Mm -hmm. And that's a picture that Robert took just yesterday. And they have many of them, as you saw from that er uh, earlier aerial view. Um, the one in the center, I don't know if you can tell, but that's a barn that they've built. You can see right there, there's the doors for one of the containers. And then where the, um, yeah where the tree is, there would be the other one. And so they created the shipping containers on the bottom, put a permanent foundation, and then built this whole big barn. Uh, so going on, I, again, I, that same picture is used, but you can see that these things can be positively used in certain ways. Uh, these are just a couple local examples, both the Springville one and the Salt Lake City. Um, there's also some other apartments already built in Salt Lake City. This, this one I just found when I did a Google search, and I don't know if it's completely built yet, but anyway. Um, and then again, that, that barn one there. 
Um, so being used as building materials is something that's happening in, in different locations. Um, it's definitely a possibility. Um, so this is kind of where we want to get your thoughts and questions, concerns, that sort of thing. And we can take note of those. And if you are interested in entertaining the idea of any kind of ordinance for these things, then we'd love to have your feedback on that as we put that together. I think the number one issue with the storage containers comes into <clears throat> unsightliness. Um, because the storage containers are structurally well built. Uh, uh, but the big problem you see is in the picture right here, you drive by somebody's yard and they got one of them sitting in the backyard for storage in there, just a big rust ball, just like this. The neighbors would look over there and think that looks horrible in the neighborhood. And so I think if, the, if an ordinance is put in place, something that um, if, if one is put in the yard for storage, as long as they meet the standard zoning for setback off the right of ways and stuff and they are painted and maintained that they, they would be a, an acceptable use but uh i don't paint my sheds so that's gonna be a hard one. <laughs> you know what <laughs> i don't paint my shed it was terrible <laughs> <laughs> but again like i said hell i'd like to entertain a citywide hoa <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's where I'm at. It's, I called <laughs> it's called the zoning ordinance. It's called the zoning ordinance. Essentially, that's a, that's yeah, what I, an H.O. Definitely nothing in the front yard open, exposed. If they're in the yeah. rear yard or the backyard, then... Well, the other issue that comes up with this, this same discussion we're having is, is you know, the, uh, the policing of zoning and ordinance falls to a citizen calling here and complaining, that complaint going to the police officer, them going and addressing it. Well, I can drive around town and I can point out hundreds of zoning and ordinance violations. Okay. And so without a neighbor calling, so this here is just another step to say, hey, um, yeah, call a the city, they've got this box, have them painted it, send the police, you know. Oh, our city attorney tells us we don't have anything like that here. In <laughs> I don't know if I need to wait for a public comment or just. No, my, you, we're my not doing the hearing. You're session. not. You're not the public. You just get to talk. <laughs> yeah, that's a work session. That is an in, enforcement part of it because the reason why I say, "Hey, is that Tyson Adams house?" It looks very similar. Like it will change the character of the neighborhood when you come in, drop them off, come in, pick them up. Like I am having a hard time enforcing. The code now because neighbors don't want to get involved like neighbors will complain they'll call the city they'll call brad they'll call me but they don't want to get involved and i need them to testify in order to enforce it and so my, my concern is that, that that concern you shared on your other slide about changing the character of the neighborhood is he, he's definitely running a business out of his house he's parking semis there he has a shed that's that shape it's not a storage container but in his yard there that we're trying to get him to clean up, stop running the business from there. I'm afraid if we don't craft an ordinance that regulates them heavily, that it will be, oh, well, I just have a container there, have my home office there, run it from my yard. And well, because it's permitted, I can have these semis come in any time of the day or night to pull them in and out. And so I, 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 can, see, I can see the benefit, but the enforcement part too is Neighbors that can't be scared to testify against each other. Well, is that a city ordinance or is that a state ordinance that says it has to be a neighbor that complains? Well, I have to have evidence. So the the witness, the, the best evidence I have is the witness that I identified it. And a lot of the neighbors, when I say, Well, will you fill out a statement? No. Will you come and testify? No. Well, if I don't have anything to prove that it's going on, I can't move forward with the case. So like I can have an officer go by and the things that he's observed, like, okay, there's an accumulation of junk. I can see the junk from the street. I can bring in the officer to testify, but bringing in the semi with his air brakes at 3 a.m., the officer didn't see that. I need a neighbor to come in and testify with that. Or, you know, I've seen him park the semi here on these days of the week because they live there, they see it. The officer can only go, go by every so often to see if it's there or not. Sounds like you need to put a camera out. <laughs> but I need a, a trail cam. A neighbor to say it's authenticated. 
this is the camera I put out and the pictures I took. So that, that's the hard part I run into is, is proving it. Like we have the ordinances on the books and I know Brad has said that he's gonna dedicate an officer to more code enforcement so there's more uniformity, there's more continuity of it, more consistency, but that, I mean, that's what, I'm just going off the end, giving you my perspective of enforcement. Like I can do it, I just need the evidence. And so, so Brandon, a recommendation from you would you recommend that we consider some sort of ordinance for these or just recommend leaving the ordinance status quo and just enforce what we've got? I like what I think it was you know, what said about the have setback requirements, have yeah, that it can't be done in the front yard. You know, I think you get to when you pull them in and out to set them so have time during daylight hours, like. So, so we would have to stipulate that in the morning. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I have a question about that. Do we need to differentiate these between a, a shed or a, an accessory structure, basically? I think that's something that, yeah, should be discussed is, is it going to be used for a building material for a dwelling versus not a dwelling, a shed or something? Because... I think you're going to get people trying to do this for both. And if it's going to be used for a dwelling, well, how do we know if they're meeting requirements for plumbing and electricity? Maybe we need to make a division between pure storage shed and any other use. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking that there's any other use besides just using it to store stuff. But it probably ought to be something like a conditional use permit so that we can come in and review the instance and decide whether or not we feel like that's a good situation for that zone, that neighborhood. It looks to me like it gets really complicated if they start wanting to build a multi story structure out of these units and this kind of thing. There's a lot of engineering that ought to be reviewed. And and a number of other things. So I, I think we ought to have some opportunity to really regulate that and watch over this. So right, because clearly this is a structure. They have used they um, they've used some containers as a building material, but this is a structure that would have required a building permit, and is subject to current building code. Right, whenever it's constructed. So engineering, all of that kind of stuff. I guess just as a as a regulator, I I need further guidance <laughs> on on how we craft code to make a specific differentiation. Um, and when that occurrence should happen. Um, I think the number of containers should be in that as well to okay. differentiate, right? Because they're using two of them at there. At least two. At least two. And so if you're using more than one, I think it steps a tear up and say, this is turning into something else and needs to be more heavily okay. regulated. Well, are you saying this is a residential or commercial? Right now I'm speaking uh, residential. The commercial is a whole different ball game. Yeah, these are, these are starting to show up in residential areas. You can drive up a lot of places and people go. I mean, so you don't want something to say the only one high. You don't want to be stacking two of these because you could stack two of them, still be at 16 feet in your backyard, be under the, the limits, but now you got this massive container sticking out of your backyard. So I think something that, you know, in a residential area, not allowing stacking and things like that. Yeah. So, really and I think that's, I think that's an important thing to discuss for just a second because you could build a 16 foot garage right. in your rear yard. So is it like Commissioner Morgan said, is it an appearance issue? Yeah. For me it is. So the question is, do we do does the planning commission develop an ordinance and then send it to the staff to see that it goes according to what the state tells us? Or does the state tell us anything on what they mean? There, as near as I know, there's no state regulations on these. Um, now, if they're being used as a building material, our building inspector said that 
any alteration to these things other than aesthetic would need to be engineered. And so if it's even if you cut a hole in it to run wiring through it, for example, that's altering it. And it could question the integrity of the structure. And so, so we could regulate that through the building permit process. But if they put stacks through in your backyard, and we don't know if they're going inside and going down. So I think we'd right. have to limit, not let them stack it even if it's under. Well, yeah, I would have to limit it. I mean, if we're going to look at allowing them in residential areas, which they're showing up, um, like I said, setbacks, um, appearance, um, maybe even what type of uh, foundation they have to be set on, whether that be 10 inches of gravel or whatever that is. But the other thing that comes into play is um, ordinance enforcement. You know, I'm, we can do everything we want here, but if, if there's no enforcement going on. Um... Well, and if the enforcement's not going on, we're not in any different place than we were before, right? But but having you something you tell me that there's ordinance enforcement going on in the city other than their neighbor calls and their plane gets all in to we don't want to piss our neighbors off, so we're not gonna sign anything. That's the ordinance enforcement. Okay? It's a concern that I'm trying to address, and hopefully with the code enforcement officer, we can find more violations, be more thorough, because yeah, without a without a neighbor being able to testify what they've seen. I'm limited in what I can do. And I've been going through the code that, you know, it, if it gets to a certain point, I mean, it's, it's a nuisance. And the code says that the city can go in with or without an order from a judge to abate the nuisance and bill that person. I think what, I, I haven't talked to Jason about it, but I think what he would recommend is that you get the court order from the judge. And so that's why I'm hoping to talk with Brad, talk with Jason, to talk with the judge, and just we get all on the same page. Like, you know, here, here's the steps that we want to take to allow people to come into compliance. And if not, would you have the courage to make that order so that the city can go in and just abate the nuisance? I mean, if who knows if that person would ever pay it, but I mean, there would have to be funds allocated to it. I mean. Tyson Adams, Kim Bowers come to mind. They all mm -hmm. are constantly violating the ordinances and trying to enforce them. And um, and it doesn't require it. Had, it doesn't have to be a code enforcement officer. I mean, it could no, be it could it could be an officer. It could be a neighbor. It could be anyone. It's just the most the people that have the most knowledge, the intimate knowledge, are the neighbors. They live with it. They know when it's happening, when it started, but they don't want to get involved because that's the hard part so an officer with a legal justification I mean, an, an officer can go to the street the sidewalk whatever make notes of what he observes but he's not there 24 7 to see when the semi truck rolls in in the residential neighborhood at three in the morning but when he releases the air brakes the next morning at 5 a.m um so that, that that's my concern is changing the character of the residential neighborhood because Oh, I'm using it for a shed, but then I change it into my man cave. Now it's my home office. Now it's and but I need I need more to come in. So I'm gonna have the semis come in at six in the morning or so I, I think maybe one of the basic questions then is we don't have to allow them. We don't have to. I mean, we could basically say that's a shipping container, period. It's not permitted. What about the pods, though, that gets a loose living? Other than if you room. have a, in a residential zone, if you have a an approved building permit, then you can bring that in yeah, that, that for construction or uh, on a temporary, uh, or for 30 days. Yeah, that's 30 days. And yeah. that's it. We don't have to expand this. This is just something that we have noticed and to say, okay, are we going to deal with these things or? Well, we either because if, it, if we say they're just not permitted, then it just is an unfortunate. I, I think, personally, I think they're gonna be the building thing of the future. Salt Lake's doing it, all these other hipster communities <laughs> are doing it. 
and it's going to trickle down. It's going to get down. Like you said, it's in Provo already. It's going to come down this way. It's in Springville. Yeah, it's yeah. in Springville. Well, the, it's if the tank it comes to base, and then that's fine. As long as I think that would be the only one to worry about. <laughs> and for building and stuff, but I don't have a problem people using it as a storage shed either. And so I think prohibiting them completely is not the right way to go. I mean, if somebody wants to do that instead of a shed, then they're usually more affordable. Than, than building a shed, and I think if we out if we outlaw them, there's already so many residents in Payson that have them. I mean, I could open a can of worms. And to to Commissioner Morgan's comment, I I don't want to live in a city where we have code enforcement officers driving around making sure everybody's doing exactly what they should with their property. I I think that really you're fine until you do something to bother those around you. If you're negatively impacting your neighbors and make a complaint, that's when we look into it. But I'd like to have something on the books specifically for for these shipping containers so that way if you do have a neighbor that, you know he's getting he's got one then he's got two then he's got three then he's stacked one and then i would love to have some recourse there i would think limiting to one on a residential lot is probably and and in the backyard, the backyard. yeah the backyard setback the height requirement yeah well if you limit one it gets the height requirement anyway because then you're eight foot it's just you've got one well, we'd have, we'd have to do a little research because they make them high, what are they call them, high cubes. Um, yeah, so they're double high. Well, they're, no, the high cubes are just tall, 10 skinny. feet tall rather than 8 feet tall yeah. or 12 feet tall. Um, so. Well, what is it, 10 feet tall? Well, actually, we'd have, you know, we'd, we'll have to do the research there for the, for the high cubes. But, but okay. So I think some regulation is smart, but I think getting too crazy becomes... So, can we put something in there about unsightly this way? Can't be more than 10% rusted or so that's back, back to like you said, shed or something. If we're not requiring <laughs> your shed. <laughs> I, I'm afraid <laughs> the, the optics of it, right? The, the beauty's in the side of the beholder, right? Someone could argue that all day long that well, that's we, patina and we like that rest there. And we like it when you look at it, you need a tetanus shot. <laughs> As staff, one thing that we thought about was that if you are using it as a storage container shed, then it sh probably shouldn't be identifiable as a shipping container from like K line or Matson or yeah, things like that. Those numbers and letters on there. At least, at least paint it enough to say. We've matched it to our house. But but what looks better? These the letters or the blue one where they've just spray painted over the what logo might have been there. So I don't, I don't think it's spray painted. I think that was <laughs> like, you know, um, some people pay extra for that. Yeah. 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 The rustic like, view like good the worn out jeans. Yeah, it's like the worn out ripped jeans. So I mean, do we take this on as something that we write, we develop something as an ordinance and then we bring it back to review and I get to write it. We we they could draft it. They get to write it because I, I gotta say I take a stab at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they give me out a, a lot of house chores when my wife says, "What are you doing?" I say, "Planning okay. commission stuff." And I I can't. We will it. outsource anything. <laughs> <laughs> that, that way, Robert's not emailing us at nine fifty five. Well, that's right. <laughs> I'll just email you about something else. <laughs> sure, sure, Robert. You do a version, and I'll do one, and then we'll compare. Okay. And then we'll obviously adopt yours, but it would still be fun to make us think. Like, what would we do to develop an ordinance that we could honestly say we brought to light because we wanted to write something before it became something that we they'll write it and they'll bring it to us with a draft, then we discuss it, make changes, and then they fix it, and then they bring it back to us. And then when we're happy with it, we say send it to city council. Okay, unofficially, then I'm going to accept the challenge to do one just so I can have <laughs> You go for it. <laughs> so when my wife says, Can you do this? And I'm saying, No, I'm doing planning commission stuff. But, this um, is on record. You just told your wife. My wife doesn't like, watch this. Tune in. She's not tuning in. I mean, I got no problem. But, uh, they just regulate them as um, sensory structures. What do the what well, do the other cities do as far as cool? So that I, that's something that we can continue. I think to it research. obviously can't be a dwelling because we wouldn't allow a detached accessory dwelling unit anyway, right? And so to use a storage unit as a detached accessory dwelling unit would be wrong because you couldn't do any other 
detached accessory. So if we're making a dwelling out of it, that's just a well, but we're allowing are we allowing now home businesses to use an accessory unit for structures? Yeah. yeah, they could use and if it was a home based business, then I would think as long as it would have been approved in any other and like limited, not in a, and limited to one and in the backyard and with proper setbacks yeah. and yeah. solar panels. Yeah, you know, we're we're gonna, okay. So can I change the subject a minute? <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about the situation there at Raylock. Is there anything in our ordinance right now that would pre prohibit Raylock from stacking those two or three high? Oh, they are totally in violation. <laughs> they they are completely in violation believe, right now, as they are. I believe the current ordinance prohibits stacking. So what what are they doing in violation, Robert, in particular? If they've just got them in their parking lot, they, they don't have parking for one. They don't have parking. Okay. Uh, they're misusing those. They don't have that many employees anymore. Okay. So therefore, right, you know, they don't need the parking. But their facility and what they're using, utilizing that for is, has gone far beyond what, they need a new building. They, they need, if we're going to expand a business, then- They need storage for the- Right. Yeah. Is there any appetite among any of us to, to look into changing commercial and beefing up that code? So my question though is how different is that than if they just have a bunch of semi-trailers parked out there on the road? Because that would be legal, right? If they had a bunch of trailers just parked back there. If it's taking up all of their parking, no. So they could do semi trailers. So they still have a they still have a parking requirement, and if you look at that picture, right. uh, th there's nothing left. They actually park on the street for their employees because the parking lot. Is recently, wow. recently we, um, the city, resurfaced that street. Uh, and they were really upset <laughs> because they had actually come out and striped the city street for and for parking <laughs> and didn't want us to take that away. Or if we were going to resurface, then make sure that they that we put back their striping so they can they utilize our street. Wrong. So no, they thought that it was their street and their frontage and we had to politely but firmly say, no, that is a public street and currently Payson residents are subsidizing your business by providing you parking. So, so they, they can't stack them, correct? That's what we decided. And that, that other one, yeah, they didn't say anything about you stack. So I, I, I just see that this may grow, um, you know, We've got folks down in the industrial park. We may want to extend the use of these. Um, and we may want to stack them. You know, uh, goodness, you might have a dealer show up and say, I want to sell them for, for here. You know, so I'm, I'm wondering if we need to look at the commercial side of that. And, and, uh, I would really recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to ask for like two stack them, make them look like Springville, and say make it look like a nice structure. <laughs> <laughs> but then they, have, then they have to put a strap tank in place. Bangers and mash. I would think so that's, I, that's tricky though with businesses. Would we do it by the the size of the business, the amount of parking, the size of the building? I think you do it off square footage. Just be like, well, what about zone? What what's the zone that they're in? So I would say things to consider: the zoning. Lot coverage, no. screening, appearance. Uh, I think commercial would definitely be a lot more specific. And I think commercial would be a lot easier to regulate too. I would think a business would be much easier to regulate for violations than residential. Well, because if things sit right now though, Ray Lock is out of they're they're not within they, the because of parking. So we can and lot coverage. That. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Could or maybe it already is this way, but could the city count the square footage of those containers as if there were building square footage? If they were, it, I mean, if they were actually constructed as a building, because if they're if they're going to be a building, then they need to be on a foundation. They need to be engineered properly. And and honestly, stacking wouldn't be a problem if they're engineered properly. Right. That goes back to that apartment picture I showed you. So. Right. I'll give you an example of why um, I think location on the lot 
and zoning is really important. If you if you remember for a long, long time, uh, in the back of the, I always call it the first security bank building, but it's the currently the ERA building uh, on uh, First North, uh, there was a storage container in the parking lot for a long, long time. Um, it's not really the greatest image as you're coming into Payson, right? So I think being being specific about what zones they're per, allowed in, what zones they might not be allowed in, uh, and the location and the screening and the uh, proximity uh, to others yeah. and the number, all of those things come into play. You mentioned they're allowed for temporary, should be defined temporary. I think the a, code days before a project started 30 days after yeah. a project or a period of 30 days. Yes, within 30 days. So if there, there's a project up to one year, 30 days before, 30 days after. Right. In residential zones, I don't know if it's clearly determined in this non-residential zone. Well, that one's not resident, but solely for transportation because of good. So well, maybe for residential too, to be, well, no, that's part of the sensors. Yeah. And you, I mean, you do cover there, maintaining good repair, place on site, location will not eliminate required parking. Yeah. So, so it, says, it, says, and it says city council may, but it's not obligated to approve long term store. So you've got a lot in there already that's. There's a good base to work off yeah. of, and and we have a working draft that will probably bring you. But we just kind of wanted to get your initial thoughts, feelings, um, where we should be going. I mean, another another really good example. I think it was mentioned before is Walmart um, on the west side of the Walmart building, uh, especially if you go out there right now. There are there. Well, on the east side, they're doing construction, and there are some out there for the construction part. On the west side of the building, there are storage containers out there that I'm sure are chock full of Christmas stuff, right? Uh, and they and they use those things for seasonal items. Um, I think the intent was that it would be kind of a temporary thing. It's become more of a permanent thing. But then you say, okay, well, is it functioning well? Is it you know, to what extent do we regulate? To what extent is it supporting a business? You know, I think. I surmise that um, Baylock started off the same way. We need some place to store this stuff so that it's not laying off the guards. Uh, they have a truck full of brake shoes that need to be relined. They put the heat containers in them and they hope they get this stuff away. I think Walmart's kind of the same way they started it. One on that side, and there's two, and there's three, and there's eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to regulate our businesses to death by any means, but uh, you know, Red Lock's an extreme example. Uh, it's, it is unsightly for sure. I, I'm sure that there is a. I'm sure that there is a well maintained map <laughs> somewhere of all of those uh, containers and what they contain, and and. It, it is their business model at this point. But they they are out of compliance. They're they're taking them apart. Has that not been brought up to them at all? That's I think been a. And yeah, I think the I think the most recent incident, like I said, was the street and kind of came to a head a little bit. Could we put something about where the zone fucks up against? Because like Walmart, where they have theirs, it's commercial out there. There's no, but I'm sure Rainlock, there's houses where you can put it there. Yeah. yeah. I mean Walmart. It, exactly. Eventually, there will be hopefully a hotel right next to that. But then still industrial area. Industrial area. <laughs> yeah. So. Is Rainlock industrial zone or? I don't know. I think it's light industrial. Right? Yeah. Because um, I'm like, that would be the perfect zone for it. But then, I mean, to Raylock's credit, when you look at it, I mean, it's well maintained. It's not all, lined up nicely. Uh, all yeah. very symmetrical. Like, 
it makes my obsessive compulsiveness just go, thank you. Um, yeah. And how long have they been there? I mean, I've never been there. It's definitely expanded. Yeah. Google imagery, if you do the drive by Google imagery, they're not there, but the aerial shows them. And the aerial is 20, actually, you could probably 20, do the aerial and just use the timeline. The timeline and see when they actually be in place. You know? Any other thoughts? Can you email at this? Uh section of the ordinance so we can kind of prove that and mm -hmm. really have some more discussion on that. <laughs> He's going for it. Yeah, so yeah. I'll I'll email you the draft one we're working on. It includes this and has some stricken out sections, but by all means if you don't like what's been stricken out, you can suggest other changes. But so I'm gonna pose a question then which is after you guys bring the proposal on what the ordinance would be. Hypothetically, after the ordinance is approved, what are we going to do to enforce what is set as an ordinance? Or are we going to put up our hands and say, la, 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 we're not going to deal with that? Well, if we're going to do this, there's no point in going through right. this. That, that's what I'm proposing. That's why, that's why my question is, what, what does the other surrounding cities do as far as their code enforcement? Okay. Do they have a code, code enforcement officer, or is it the same way citizen complaint to the police department? Depends on the city. Yeah, way back. I can't remember eight hours ago. <laughs> was a I was a clerk in Orem, and they had two code enforcement officers that would go around, and they could see a lot from... From the street, their their main focus was the accumulation of junk people, the the hoarders and stuff like that. And they would bring cases to the court, and you know they work with people as much as they can. Like, hey, we'll give you this much time to come in compliance. If they didn't, they file the cases and they like work straight through the court system. And in rare instances, but it did happen, the city would go in with trucks and everything and clear it out for them. Um, but yeah, because Warren was so huge, they had two officers dedicated full time for it. I think they right. have one part time to just at least let the citizenry know we are looking like we we will enforce it because right now it's so not enforced that everyone just thinks, oh well, Payton doesn't care. Like, right. We care. It's just resources the yeah. yeah the resources and if we don't have the resources people brave enough to stand up for their neighbors like hey this is this is wrong we need to clean up that junk so i have at least three zoning cases right now two of them are well known <laughs> one <laughs> not as much but um yeah tyson adams i mean he's running a business out of his house that he shouldn't be he's parking semis there he, he's got a fence there that's illegally He's got a bunch of junk there, and it's, I mean, the neighbors hate it. He, he's doing the semis at three in the morning, that everybody's at three in the morning, and he needs to stop. And so I want to step up enforcement. That's my goal. That's my plan. Yeah, if we, if we go through the process to create an ordinance, then we, it'd have to be pursuant to the knowledge that um, there's code enforcement that um, starts to end enforce some of this stuff to make it worth the time and the effort to, to, to create an ordinance. So after I do that writing ordinance, do you want to swear in and start for the uh -huh. enforcement? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, again I'm, I'm Tonin, so I mean, yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, a Tonin New Yorker, absolutely. That would be so absolutely fun. Um, worth, worth the time. Um, but it, I still think it's worth um, creating the ordinance. Yeah. Um, so I think what we'll do, we'll send you the draft, we'll work on some changes, uh, and then the next time we want to talk about this, we'll meet in the DRC room and start grabbing pencils. And Is, is the ordinance going to be commercial and residential together, or is it going to be two separate ordinances? I think what we'd do is it would be, it'd be this same section here, as you can see noted, 
But then if you want to regulate it specifically by zone, then we would put it as a use in that zone or a conditional use in that zone. Very good. Any further questions or discussion on this one? Awesome. Now we're back to commission and staff reports. Staff, have anything else? How did you enjoy training last month? Good. Have you memorized the book? No, I have something when I said I will get to it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> that video was very enjoyable too. That guy actually was pretty yeah. entertaining the way he presented it. I'm glad our city showed the view there. Yeah. yeah. I struggled because without the microphones there, it, it was very difficult to hear. To hear. So that's a large room. Uh, well, that was the only real strike against them that I had. Okay. I was jealous of their city center. Uh -huh. That too. That was nice. Yeah. Really nice building. But I thought it was a great, great presentation. The Come speaker on, was entertaining. They haven't had a movie film there, so I mean, it's, it's okay, right? Yeah, they don't have you know, it's, right here. it's yeah. fine. It's true, right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's my one claim. <laughs> so okay, there's nothing else. I will entertain a final motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Mr. Rowley, all in favor? By yes. 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 <laughs> awesome. We're gonna stop there. Yeah, you can that question about uh, oh. ordinance. Ordinance. <laughs> 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 <laughs>